Oh, them biscuits don't look the best. That's it. It's what Roy requested. Kieran. Roy, oh, Roy requested them. Roy's gone back to the 1980s. He said he wanted biscuits. Oh, no. What do you want? Do you want the popcorn? Why well, have you got everything else I've as well? Got everything else as well. I think yeah. I think we go. I think we. I think we can. We do pander to Roy a little bit, don't we, Kieran? We we, we do, but we do pander to him a little bit. You know what I mean? Roy says jump. If you're, you if you, you're ask, asking if you how ask high, aren't you? If you ask for something, I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. That's me. That's I don't what I mean. You're, you're I don't low maintenance. Anything. I don't ask for anything. Do I? I'm low but maintenance. If you do, I'd get it. Yeah, you can have your own little bowl there. Look. Look at that. Beautiful. Thank you. Do you fancy yourself as a singer, Gary? Oh, yeah, the, no. If, if he plays the guitar, you'll sing. No, Carol will. Carol will? Yeah, Carol will, yeah. Well, he did in the Cavern Club, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Carol will sing. I left them both out because I didn't know which would be Oh, watermelon. Pipe, pineapple and mango we're going to go for. Yes, that's the one. Oh, you get last second. Oh, it looks like a baby one. That honestly, Barry, that is so that's bad. Comedy, comedy gold, that. It's not. Can we not get a proper guitar? <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying in the building. And this is someone's in the crew. Do you carry a pick with you everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> you say pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, Peter's gonna play this for us. So we've got Peter Schmeichel as a guest today and he's a guitar player and we think you can get him to play a song with Cara. Bit rusty. I played, I, it's one of the, my greatest regrets, not carrying on when I got to a pretty decent standard after about th three or four years. Oh, yeah. So you, oh, here we go. Here we go. What do you think this that one? You? Oh, that was better. That's better for him. I'm trying to... That's wow. just been tuned. Look Have at a this. Look. Wait, have you got your pick? Yeah, I've got a pick. Let's see Plet this Plectrum. One. Just move Unreal. I used to be able to play the Lars. This the is... Lars? Oh, that's a bit of me. I used to be able to, I can't anymore. <laughs> I got you the biscuits. Yes, Gary! And is that oh, on? You you that you. one, yeah. Yes. yes! I love that song. Peter, come, Peter. I oh, like yeah. to leave. Hey, it was a good shot, man. Just start with it. Just man, with Jill. Jill, you're there. You start, keep going with that, that song. Good, that was good, one. That was good. We like it. Here he is. Brilliant. He's a man of many our talents. Our goalkeeper and our lead guitarist. It's in tune. It's been tuned. It, oh, it. no, it's not. <laughs> You got a singer there, look, you got your singer. Yeah, yeah, he's ready. <laughs> is that your guitar from Paul? No, they just brought it in there now. Can you play anything? Get it tuned then, Peter. It's not tuned. I'll tune it's it then. My favourite biscuit. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Peter can play. When someone <laughs> puts a guitar in the hand, they just look cool, don't they? Yeah. Like, look, <laughs> like, look um, how cool he looks. I've got my wife is youngest to play guitar. Oh. Um, one of the ways to do that is there are so many ladies in it. You know, you pick up a guitar, yeah, I... the girls would just go wild, you know. <laughs> Does that, does that mean my problem? <laughs> <laughs> Not for everyone, Nick. <laughs> yeah, you didn't look as cool, to be fair, when I walked in. <laughs> Can we have a cup of tea? Is it possible to have a no, cup of tea? Yeah. No one tuned it. No, they said they tuned it on the way in. Yeah, but... A big thank you to you. You look that. good. Thank you, Jill. It's OK. I'm still getting away from hoodies. I like hoodies. I know. And Jill knows I like hoodies. She bought older. me a present. It is a, I think there is definitely a, a time when you've got to stop oh, wearing hoodies. Jill, I please. didn't I didn't he helped us when we were in Germany, what? so I just gone. What do you get to age is it? that's got everything? No, Jill, this is an amazing gift, okay. honestly. But do you know something? What age what, are you when you, you stop wearing I'm hoodies? I'm 50 in five months. Yeah. But do you know something? When you get to 50. Do you know when you get to basically sort of October, like we should come to October, like, yeah. and you start to put winter clothes on. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, thank you. You know what I love? Any coffee? Clean, like a new pair of socks. Yeah. I love a new, new pair of socks. I like ankle socks. <laughs> 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 socks. Is that Earl Grey or no? Peter, we are def you de we're definitely going to ask you to play a song at yeah. the end. 
and Kara, you're going to be singing. You're going to be singing. Sing. <laughs> you're going to sing, Kara. So, we, we... so I'm going to sing one of your songs from the band. No, so, no, I do. Is he in a band? Big an Oasis song. Can we think of it? I, I like what you just done then. Half the world I away. Like yeah. Yeah. You do that to one. Leave this city. Are you this going to Oasis? Yeah, we like that. Smells. Have you got tickets? I think we all know that one. Are you going to Oasis? Oh, what a tune yeah. that is. Are you going to Oasis? The Royal Family, what a I show. I got them in a tent. Go on, give us a touch. Half the world away. What a show that was, the royal family. Yeah. That was. Yeah. What a show. Nice You're quite Peter. a good singer. You can sing that. Nice, good. Peter. You are quite a good singer. At one point, I thought your balls had dropped. <laughs> 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 your balls dropped. At one point, it was a The things we can't say in TV <laughs> that she can. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> did you ever learn to try to? Instrument? No, have you, did you no. ever? Guitar? No. no. Guitar for a few years. Never. You only done that after you played, obviously. No, no, even when we played, I had piano lessons. Uh, so I went every Tuesday. And, uh, and yeah, it was my getting away from. Hammering me. I'm a Gary in the morning, you, play piano nothing, in the afternoon to chill out. Looking forward to smashing <laughs> you. <laughs> you know what? We You've actually friends. had a problem with all of us. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. me, not me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you, you probably had a bigger problem with me. <laughs> well, what was the what happened? What happened between no, you two? They, they never won anything, did they? <laughs> oh, God. There There's your headline. <laughs> For goalkeepers who make mistakes at United, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, I never did that, so I don't know. <laughs> made one or two, but of course... <laughs> I know I make mistakes, but I never accepted that, that I would spend the next second thinking about that. Brian Robson, one of my biggest heroes, was sitting next to me, you know? I'm like this. Yeah. I'm really in paradise. He could have put nil, I would have signed. Oh, oh, oh this would go down well. I was from oh, the, get the violin, yeah. I was get the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. It was my dream. <laughs> On any given day, something could go off. I was coming back to my cruise ship, Peter, and you were reluctant to give back the captaincy. That added another yeah. level to it. I was more than reluctant. You ended up wrestling on the floor in an hotel corridor in Singapore with each other, didn't you? I want to know who won. There's never a winner. Never a winner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Stick to Football, brought to you by Skybet. And this week, joining me, Cara, Roy and Jill is a Manchester United goalkeeping legend, one of the greatest of all time and certainly the best goalkeeper that I ever played with, Peter Schmeichel. Peter looked after me in Dortmund, got, got me out of there alive. Oh, was that when you were drinking excessive amounts of alcohol? <laughs> well, I was, it was in college. That was one thing. That you got away with actually saying that live on air. Was, I, I just don't get how that happened, you know? Do you remember that being sacked? Yeah, you know, he even said he had eight. He's very points. good. At, he's very good at getting away. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I remember that interview actually. Was it actually scary when you were in there, Dortmund? Who was it with? It was like, scary. Yeah, because weren't the fans and stuff? Was that no, when we, you... we were all mates? Oh, okay. So, so the people I was I was with. So I've just gone into into where uh, I've said on on the show I want to go in the yellow wall. Yeah. Bit of bravado. Oh, didn't okay. really mean it. And then the show just went. Do you want to go? I was like, oh, God. But it was something I always wanted to do. So the, the actual... So even in a Champions League game, it sounds silly. The home team are not in, in charge of the stadium. UEFA take control of the stadium, if you know what I mean. It's almost like you've got to go through UEFA. Not, so yeah. Borussia Dortmund are like, yeah, you can go in the yellow wall. Brilliant, great you know, publicity, whatever. But UEFA were like, no. And it was like, no, I'm going in. You know, I'm just going to stand here and like the yellow walls there. So I just, I just got it myself on like a bar. Uh, when I say a bar, not the bar. <laughs> yeah. It was a bar. <laughs> just like, you know, like, like an old-fashioned... Like, standing up. It was yeah. like being in, you know, the 80s in, in England. So I've just parked myself here. And then all these people around me, just like... There's obviously a couple of cameras at the start before and then watching the game, so they start getting onto what it is. But they 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 were just going to the, like, to the bar when the game was gone, but coming back with, like, you know, these cardboard things where it's like you bring eight pints. Pint, yeah. So it was just like, I'm in, I'm in this little gang now, so I haven't said, get me a drink. I haven't yeah. asked the fella. He's just like, oh, we're here now. Boom. And then he come back again. So I'm thinking, I haven't got you, one. Were they forcing you to drink it? <laughs> no, not really, but uh, <laughs> I wanted to be in with the gang, didn't I? So then I had to get... I have been told, I'll have to go and get some. So we just kept coming back with pints and then the winning. So everyone, all the God, they're all the singer and all that. So uh, it just went from it. So it wasn't the plan, was it? No. It just, so were you just, actually you did as well? So, yeah. so, so I am there. So my job is to, I, I do like two, three sort of minutes before the game, a couple of times. 
And we obviously we did it together. And then after the game, I go and do the interviews in the flash zone. Now, this is where Yuri felt really, really strict. And that guy who looks after Dortmund is a he's the strictest of the lot. I mean yeah. when we did half time, I don't know if you saw that. Because we got Jamie out at halftime, down to me, to the camera. Right? No, no. He's <laughs> not, at this point, no. At this point, no. But what we did was we turned the camera towards the yellow wall, where we normally have to have the pitch in the back. And he comes sprinting. I can see he's a tall guy, sprinting out. And he goes, you can't do that. And he started to act, uh, to tell me off. You are not allowed to go in the yellow wall. Like, whoa, whoa. He goes out. And I say, hey, 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 easy. We're only going to do half a minute, just, just to show where he is. And he's literally, you know when you see the length? His face is here and it's angry. <laughs> Got to speak to the students. And he was, I mean, but it was after because you, what, what you forget to take off was your good Dortmund stuff. Oh, and when yeah. Louis, Louis so, and Ricky oh, came yeah. over, you know, he comes over, <laughs> he's a good guy, Jake, yeah, you know, and we're going to do an interview. And he looks at Jamie and say, no, fuck that. And he left. So I've got the Dortmund scarf Dortmund on in the band, so I've just carried on, just coming to this mix zone. I've got the Dortmund scarf on. And then we got Jaden Sancho in the headlock, didn't we? Uh, yeah, Were you was, actually um, drunk on that interview no, then? No, I just had a couple. There is, um, <laughs> there couple is a way you have to drunk. ask permission. So you, by 10 minutes before the end of the game, you put your wishes in for who you want to speak to afterwards. Mm -hmm. We haven't got Jaden on or, at all. Yeah. So we got other players. We want the manager. Uh, we wanted... I can't remember. But not Jaden. So... Our position is you come up the stairs from the ground and you turn that way into their dressing room. So we are the first station there. And then there's another one here. One. And Jaden walks, walks past. We're, in, we're actually live to the studio. And, and Jamie just goes, whoo, brings him in. He's not allowed to come in. No, that's a, brings him in, starts to talk about... We start to talk about United as well. Yeah. You know, asking him about United and... You've already at this point said... You have asked him about it. United. It was, that was you shouldn't have done that. Was it me? It was you, actually. Sure. I got him in and started talking about the yellow wall. Have you ever but been in the point, yellow wall? But at this point, you've already told the you had eight pints, you know? Yeah. And you're very loud. And the, the people next to us <laughs> are doing interviews and they go like... <laughs> <laughs> so at some point, I have to turn to the camera and say, I, I, I apologise, but we are in... And Jamie's is supposed to be a little bit more quiet. And you can see Jaden, he's like... How do I get away from here? You know, he's in between me and him, and there's a camera <laughs> where he can exit. You know? <laughs> so, and we had, I mean, my God, the problems we had afterwards. And I went to Dortmund the next round. Yeah. And I did get nothing. I, did get <laughs> absolutely, I had to growl and beg, and, you know. Oh, yeah. my God. They, they were a little bit cross with us. This episode of Stick to Football is brought to you by Skybet. This show is sponsored by Huel. As someone who always is on the move, running my businesses or heading to the studio, staying fueled on a packed day is never easy. I don't want to rely upon a packet of Chris or another pre-show chocolate muffin to keep me going. This is why Huel fits the bill for me. These daily A to Z vitamin drinks formulated by nutritionists are packed with 26 vitamins and minerals and keeps me going on the busiest days. Plus they taste great. My favorite is the pineapple and mango and that's definitely the one to have for me. If you're new to Huel, their taster bundle is the perfect way to get started. You can try a range of their products, including this one and see which one fits your routine and taste buds best. So if you're like me and want to stay on top of your game without sacrificing time, join the millions who love Huel. Head to Huel.com slash the overlap to grab the taster bundle and try it out. That's Huel.com forward slash the overlap. Right, Peter, I actually was reading up uh, in the last couple of days and... You have time for that? You mean 10 minutes ago? <laughs> you have time for that? <laughs> <laughs> Your first job was in the dyeing department of a textile factory. Mm hmm Dyeing. Oh. D dye, as in, like, yeah, 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 yeah. not... Oh, you're not so much dyeing. Well, you're a dying piece. I, I know people passed away at that first back in the day, but that was, well, yeah, that was, yeah, that was my first job. And what, what's, what is that, if you don't mind me asking? What, what so part? We, they, so they, they, were, they were producing textiles, and my job was to, when they came in the, on the big rolls, to put it through a machine where it got the colour that it needed. So it's full of chemicals and it, it will now make sense to you. A lot of things will make sense to you now. You know, that I worked unprotected with, you know, very dangerous chemicals for about, <laughs> about four months, five months, I think it was. 
It so how, how old are you there? How old are you at this age? I was uh, 18, just 18. I think I had to be 18 to be, yeah, so just 18. So, well, I come through a different system than, than most of you. I didn't go through an academy. We didn't have that in, in Denmark. So you, you, did, you did your school and then it, it had just been, the law had just been changed so you could have professional football in Denmark. So you could get actually professional sport up until 78. Everything had to be amateur. So we didn't have, we didn't have professional sport. So I knew I had to get myself, uh, you know, I, I was straight out of school. I needed a break from school. So just have, you know, casual jobs and then starting to think about what schools I wanted to apply for and what I wanted to do. Oh. Uh, so that was it. I, I did, I was cleaning in an old folks, folks home as well. I was doing so many different things. Um, and I actually think that for me, that was really good to have these kind of really, really tough jobs and understand what, uh, what you know, the majority of people have to go through from day to day. So to day. it might have helped you, Peter, that you weren't in an academy. Do you think, in a strange way, that you created your own maybe style of goalkeeping instead of being programmed? No, did not think, yeah, could that have been a help? I, I think so. And, and also being lucky in the sense that I met people along the way with my football who was, um, was you know, so far ahead of thinking in to, to what was there in Denmark, because right. we, we were amateurs. Right. Yeah. So I, I worked with a goalkeeping coach who, uh, who he'd been away he'd, he'd, from Denmark, he'd played in Holland. Um, and and he, his ideas were not so much this diving around and you know drills in and out of cones and up and down and, and, and the things that I see happening today. It's very much about the technique of being a goalkeeper, understanding where you are in the box at any given time, understanding how you close down your angles, uh, coming for a cross, you know, so you're working in technique of either catching it or helping the ball on, uh, decision making, literally just catching a ball. Was it like perfecting the basics, would you say? Yeah. 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 And then, then he, he, so his philosophy was that everything we did between me and him had to be outside of, of the team, never when the team was there. So the team never saw me do goalkeeping training. And then I was with the team for everything. Oh. Everything, you know. Boxers, running, pressing, whatever. Possession games. Um, wow. And I think that he might have just been able to see into the future that at some point, the back pass rule will change and at some point you have to be able to use your feet. Yeah. Um, so. That's interesting, though, because now a keeper would miss, well, not miss, but do their own session one and then just join in at the end. So you were always training a lot more than the outfield players, really. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and this wasn't happen, happening every day. Mm. So this might have been twice a week. And, and that's enough. I, I don't get this separating the goalkeeper away from the team. Mm. Um, I don't get why you don't want him in there at, you know, in every little bit. Because you get up and you get in situations in games where you need to understand, can this guy do what I'm trying to make him to do when I pass the ball back to him? Can he handle it, you know? Um, and I, I certainly don't get the idea of every morning the coach goes, the goalkeeping coach goes out with, you know, five, six goalkeepers, and they just do like a conveyor belt kind of exercise or exercises. And you, yeah, you know, the, young, the young goalkeepers will learn something from the more experienced ones. But it's training for me. It's not coaching. It's not teaching the younger keepers. They should be separated out and they should be looked at. And this is what you need and this is what we need to improve on. And, and that, I don't see that a lot. And then, of course, when you get into your 30s, if you do this every day for, for the whole of your career, at some point, diving is going to be painful, mm. you know, and it's going to have an effect. And I don't, I don't see the point of diving 20 times to your right and 20 times to your left every day. You know, you multiply that up by, by a full year. The wear and tear on, on your body, it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have that and I've, I was uh, very, very fortunate. So what, you, you're in a textile factory at 18. What's your football training look like at that time? What, what, you're do, what are you doing in football in a football sense? So at this point, I'm, I'm still at the club that I grew up in. And uh, I've just become a senior player. We would train in the evenings. So uh, how, every day or just a couple of no, times? No, no, we would train, um, I can't remember if I'm honest. 
three times a week maybe. Yeah. And then a game at the over weekend. The weekend. So just amateur. You were not amateur. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It wasn't even semi-pro. You get no money. No, nothing. Nothing. Just amateur. Uh, yeah, and then I, I stayed there for two years, and then I became semi-pro, uh, and that was in the best league in Denmark. But still, I had I still had to work. I had a job. Yeah. Well, what were you getting paid in the textile factory? And obviously, it would have been in Danish currency, but nothing. Very little. Not a lot. It was a lot for me because I was just fresh out of school. You know. Yeah. I had a little bit of money to go around, so but I didn't have any financial obligations or anything. But it was not not a lot. And, and, it, and it says then you work for the, did you work for the World Wildlife Fund? Yeah. Doing what? Well, first I was I was in. I mean, we're way back, so when I say mail order department, that was just me and somebody who refused to go into the military. <laughs> so we, we would do, uh, yeah, we would, send whatever people, people ordered, we would, you know, pack it up and send it off. And then uh, the woman who looked after the shop, uh, she quit her job and then all of a sudden I'm looking after the shop. So that was just plain nine to, f nine to five every day. And then after training. And that was after the textile factory yeah. job. So what age are you here when you're working for the World Wildlife Fund running the shop? 1920. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Look at your face. <clears throat> I, mean, I didn't know this about you, to be fair. I should yeah. have spoke to you whilst we were in the dressing rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of shouting at each other. <laughs> and then it says you went on to work for an advertising firm. And I'm just yeah. trying to get to the point of what so age the, you are. So <laughs> the club that I was at, the owner of, of the, uh, the club also had, owns a new a newspaper. And I, so in between that and, and working with that advertisement, I was an apprentice uh, carpet fitter. And, you know, the, however, you know, why I did, I don't know. My knees were absolutely knackered every day, you know. My back, you're on your knees and you're lifting things, so your back just. We're back in the day where, where you know, the ingredients in the, in the glue that you used you know, that's illegal now, I mean, anywhere in the world. Is we this were, explaining we, your mean, eccentric behaviour as we get a bit yeah, old? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Did Roy work there as well? That make sense to you guys now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, and that was, I mean, again, it was a good experience, but I, I had to quit that job. And I asked the chairman of, of the club, I said, you know, I can't be doing that. I mean, I'd be working really, really hard on a Wednesday, I, you know, on a Wednesday. And then my my boss was he was he loved football so he he would let me go like three o'clock so I could go back and then I would play what would be like a Premier League game in the evening oh. and I've been gluing and everything during the day I'm I'm, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah so so I said to the, to the chairman you know I can't be doing this and he said well come and work for me so I worked for him which was literally it wasn't, it wasn't a real job, to be fair. I had a few customers that never advertised and <laughs> I literally just had to report. And his, his, obviously he wanted me to play. So it was, a, it was a way to sort of make everything work. And I was there for two years until I signed for Bromby. And that, that's- And what age is that when you signed for Bromby? What age? Yeah. So that would, I would have been 23. So you're working basically probably for five years after you leave school, basically yeah. five, six years. That's, how, that's what it was. Yeah, but that's all good for you, isn't it? You like, I, you I look back and appreciate the game then when you do get that opportunity. I look back and I think that I've had a really, really good footballing education. Yeah. There's always this sentiment that with, with a goalkeeper, you can play on for longer. So I was never, I was never rushed in the sense that I had to get, you know, I have to go, get it going now because time is running out. I never had that feeling. So. And uh, my, the year that I joined Brumby was the second year that they were full-time. So they were the first one in 1986. Um, and, and then it's just, yeah. But you couldn't believe someone would have that journey right now, could you? I mean, the, the thought of I mean, an outfield player or a goalkeeper, all that sort of coaching that we sort of feel that everybody needs. And we probably weren't like that in terms of academies, but like that thing of 14, 15, 16, that improvement and the, mm. the hour, they talk about 10,000 hours, don't they, in the practice yeah. all the time. And yet you go from that to being the best goalkeeper in the world. It's just that journey that you've gone on just doesn't feel like, if, if you had an ambition to be the best goalkeeper in the world, now you'd be, I, I would imagine you'd be thinking you've got to go through the academy, mm. certain coaches, experience of games. Yeah. I never thought about that. I never mm -hmm. really thought about the personal side of being a footballer. It never really meant anything to me. I always thought about, I mean, what, since I was a kid, since I can remember anything about football, I wanted to play for Man United. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I can't explain why, I just want it. And every night going to sleep, I was thinking about that. That was my big ambition. My biggest thing was to play a, an FA Cup final at Wembley for Manchester United. And uh, didn't get to the FA Cup final my first year. We got in the Rumbelows Cup against you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I got there and... Sharky scored when I played McLaren, 1-0, yeah. You kept a clean sheet anyway, didn't you? Was it 1-0, yeah? It was 1-0? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Sharky scored, scored, yeah. yeah. Sharky scored, yeah. But that was my, that was my dream. Uh, I never thought about, you know, I want to be you know, the hero or the best or... Never. So who was your, he who was your hero going? Who was your sort of like person up. you looked to? Uh, remember Sepp Meyer? West Germany, Bayern Munich? But he had these long shorts and the gloves. He had the Royce gloves, you know, that's, that's where all that came from, you know. Uh, I really, because, so they were really, really good in the early 70s. They were winning everything. I think Bayern won in 71, two and three. They won the Champions League. No, that was Ajax. I think they were more 74, 74. Well, so next, okay, so they win the, the World Cup. 74. Yeah, 74. And then they move, they, they go on to win the Champions League there. And, we didn't have that much football on TV, so obviously seeing that and seeing him. But uh, we did have every, every sort of off-season, when the Danish season wasn't going, we had English football, so we were obviously familiar with, with, uh, with everyone here. And, and the goalkeepers were just so good back then. I looked at, you know, I picked something from, from Shilton, something from Ray Clemens. I mean, I just your little things where you... But I won't say I had one goalkeeper uh, that I really sort of said, that's the one I want. <clears throat> when you first came to England, your goalkeeping style was like bizarre compared to, <laughs> no, in a good way, compared well, to- How do you I, remember that? No, I mean, it, you it would have been a small no, but, it, <laughs> no, but it shocked everybody yeah. when you first came. Yeah. The, lo you know, the, throw, the going out to the edge yeah. of the box and the long, yeah. the long throw, the sort of, the big sort of, if you like, yeah. saves where you'd sort of spread your body. <laughs> where, did that, where did that sort of influence come from in your goalkeeping? Yeah, so, so Denmark, is, is it's a cold country in the winters and and the facilities are not the same as they are now today now you can play football all year round in denmark but back then you couldn't so we as a team we always played handball in the winters uh, so literally the same players uh, playing handball and then when you're in goal in handball you kind of have to sort of yeah i get that I you kind of have to trick <laughs> yeah. the guy who's shooting you have to trick him into do something so you open up somewhere and then at the moment he executes you kind of do that or whatever and, and, and we did that, I mean... Every, so you were a goalkeeper in handball, the ones where... Yeah, I was actually alternate years because we... So we were two years, so 63 and 64 one year, and then 63, I'm from 63, 63 and 62 bones in, in the next. And when we played with the 62s, they had a goalkeeper, so I would be outfield. Okay. Um, so it was a bit of a mix, but it was... A, we, in handball, it's such a quick game. When you've scored, you get the ball up to the halfway line straight away. It doesn't matter where your opposition is at this point, you can restart the game as long as you're in the little bit, little circle. So as soon as they've had a shot, if you've saved it off in the goal, just get it up there. As soon as somebody takes a shot, you will have your wingers running straight away. Mm -hmm. So if I got the ball, I would just straight away uh, throw it up. To, and being the same players, I play with the same players, football, handball. That doesn't go away. It's not like, now I'm playing football, now I've got to do it in, in a different way. It's just something we did. And we did, the, we did it from when we were children, really. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, I, re <laughs> I, re um, I remember we played a, a cup game against your team, Everton, in... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Get, little punch. <laughs> My, my first away game was at Everton, then we drew them in the cup. And there is a situation where, where I actually go out and do that. And I, I get away, it actually hits my hand. So it, it's kind of like, it's a mm. shot that I parry and it goes into the air. I get a little sort of fist to it and it gets to somebody who volleys it. And I just carry on following the ball. And I don't think about this, but I remember. The reaction. The reaction was, I mean, it was called all kinds of things, you know, unorthodox. It was controversial, stuff like yeah. that. And I was like, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm just used to handball or football. My job is to stop the ball, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. with any means possible. And, and so a lot of that came from there. 
Handball's very physical, though. I remember yeah. watch it, going to watch it. It's a very physical sport, isn't it? Where, where did you watch it? Uh, in the Olympics, yeah. 2012, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember going. It's very physical. Yeah. It's a good sport. But I, I mean, that's the only time I've ever watched it is in the Olympics. And you do see the goalkeepers, don't you, coming out with this sort of like... The, like spread, this frame, yeah. spread, yeah. I love watching the goalkeepers, the best goalkeepers in the world. It's, 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 a, it's an art form. I mean, how... I mean, the guy who's shooting very often are... Uh, two yards away, yeah. you know, they have the ball here and they could do anything with the hand to put it anywhere in the goal. But they are trying to sort of trick them into, and the way they do that, it's just unbelievable. Our, our goalkeeper just retired, this guy called Nicholas Landin. He's two meters tall, and he can literally take his one leg in a split second and put it up here. And it just looks fantastic wow. when he does it. And same, you know, it's, they, are, they are good. They're not only good, they are the bravest people I've ever seen in my life because so when you came to United, people, and you had your own style, I know you did experience, obviously, at Bromby. Was it Bromby you said, yeah, that yeah. was your club? Were, were the goalkeeper coach at United? No, there would, would, would only be one goalkeeper coach, wouldn't it, at yeah. the club? Were they trying to change you? Were you did Come you, in on Mondays. He came in on Mondays. Oh, yeah, I mean, one day a week, yeah. Alan yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah. yeah. Alan, yeah. <laughs> so would he try and change your, not your really. style? He just let you get on yeah, with it? And, not really. Um, it was very much, I, say, I, I use that word, con conveyor belt. It's very much just going through the same exercises. Then at the end of it, you have a game where you're shooting against two goals, you know, and see who wins, and young against the old ones. And, but I, so my first training session, and none of you were there at the time, was um, we, we go to Littleton Road, and I'm prepared. I mean, I've just come through possibly the hardest 18 months physically that I've ever been through in my life with, with our coach in Bromby, I am so fit, you know, and I'm like, a preseason for me was always, you know, it was two and a half months of absolutely, you know, the hardest work you can imagine. And then no life, just being tired, eat, you know, yeah. sleep, train. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so I'm ready. Okay, bring it on. You know, I'm ready for the running and everything. So we come out to Littleton Road and Kato goes, right, boxes, let's have an easy start. I don't know. Fine. Yeah. And he goes, and Peter, you can go with uh, Gary Walsh and Jim. You can go over there and do some half volleys. And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm in the box. And, you know, Chalky, Pally, Rob, or what, yeah, quick, get, <laughs> no way. And eventually I just went and stood in the older box. And it was kind of like an embarrass, and, 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 yeah, a moment of embarrassment for everyone, really, because who is this guy? But I used to do that every day. Every single day, I, I was in the boxes. I've already done my bit with the with the goalkeeping coach at another time, but I'm part of the team. I want to be part of the team. So eventually, you know, it was so embarrassing for everyone. We just started, and then it it was like yeah. That. But you were like Nev. You were always in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to stay on the outside. But I wanted to be in that game. Right, so yeah. even if I was in the middle, I felt part of it. Yeah. You know? But goalkeepers, <laughs> when they come over the boxes, you're like, oh God, take us a goalkeeper, because <laughs> it does break down, doesn't it? But I suppose no. But I suppose nah. now the keepers are probably better with their feet, yeah. aren't they? You have to. I yeah. mean, I, after my first year, they changed the back back pass rule. United. Changed, yeah, I think I probably was responsible for that as well because we <laughs> yeah. in the European <laughs> Championship final every time Brian Lauter or Fleming Pauls up the other end couldn't find anyone to pass it he just turned it and passed it back to me and I was wait, I'm waiting like this until Klinsman came on I picked it up and then put it yeah. back and I think they, they looked at that and thought whoa we've got to change that you know when people talk about the, the goalkeepers of your time, I think of you, and I think of Neville Southall actually, the two goalkeepers who stand out for me when I was a kid coming through, and the way the game's gone now. So the fact it almost sounds like you were ahead of, of your time in terms of wanting to be involved with the, you know, the at least team. for that. So what I'm saying is, do you think you'd be very comfortable with the situation now, the way how often goalkeepers are used I with think the ball? That's a difficult question to, because uh, it, it's. It, so a lot of it is not really your, your ability to play because that, that, that's a mechanical thing. Uh, it's more the mentality. I'm looking at some of those passes. So I'd never, you'd never come running down to me with a guy behind you and I'd never passed it up to you for, for you. To, I mean, I'm really, uh, I, I'm still really uncomfortable by you, watching. You wouldn't give it to me if I was free. <laughs> <laughs> I think a story. I actually gave you the ball more than any other. Do you reckon? Yeah, of course I did. Look, where's Ned? <laughs> This episode of Stick to Football is brought to you by Skybet.
This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. So, we're coming up to Halloween in the next few weeks and it's the time of the year where we have fun with the things that scare us. But there are always those things we fear that feel very real. Well, all of us here on Stick to Football want to encourage you to face those fears during this Halloween season. Therapy is a great tool for helping to not only face the fears you have, but to help you overcome them. During my playing days, I had a dip both on the pitch and off it and work with a therapist to find the right tools to help me navigate that period. Facing my own fears has been helped by the things that I learnt then, and they're still coping strategies that I use today. Therapy isn't just for trauma, but it can also be for any moment in your life where you have a challenge to overcome and want to focus on becoming a better version of yourself. And if you're thinking about trying therapy, give BetterHelp a shot. It's online, convenient, and it fits your schedule. All you need to do is fill out a short questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. Plus, if things don't click, you can switch therapists at no extra charge. Easy. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com STF today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash STF. I like to see the modern goalkeepers, and just say they do give them little yeah. passes, which they're instructed to do, but they lose it here in the goal. I think that's the keeper's responsibility, yeah. do you? It depends on the instructions. If, the, if the, co the coach says, this is the way we absolutely have to play, and if it goes wrong, I take responsibility, then you're forced to do that, which I think is wrong. I think you should have, there should be a variation of what you can do when you have the ball as a goalkeeper. But there's a lot of goalkeepers who are being told off for kicking the ball out, which, I mean, I think it's turning now because we see now Man City and Arsenal who are the best two teams. If you see how many long balls they play with, it's changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they put this variation in now, which I, I find that is very, very effective because then the other team, they, ha they have this, oh, we've got a high, the high press. So obviously I'm watching Celtic just to turn it over to a lot at the moment. What they do is they, they try to sort of suck the teams in and then they have this one pass through the middle and they've got th four players up front with incredible pace that is so effective it's only three or four passes it's never you know working your way through the team there's only three or four passes and if it's not on the ball's kicked up mm. Mm. you know there was something really really interesting a week or so ago when you're talking about you'd never give that ball to a midfield player it was fulham against newcastle yeah. uh, and yeah. the the pass goes into emile smith's row yeah. And a Newcastle defender comes and presses him. So Emile Smith throws on the edge of his own box, lose it, Newcastle should score. Yeah. The goalkeeper and then Emile Smith Rowe don't start saying, you shouldn't have given me the argument. Mm -hmm. Emile Smith Rowe said, you give it to me wrong foot. Yeah. Yeah. So the goalkeepers give it to his left foot. He's being pressed here. So Emile Smith Rowe then is sexy. No, it should be here. Now, that's where we're at. We're like, yeah. look, you'd never have thought of doing but, that in the past. But even now, it's like, no, that's fine to give it on the edge of your box, even though there's a man there. You've yeah. just got to make sure you give it to the right. That's all that's decision swap making. Swap the question yeah. or, Is that just decision making? Would, would you, would you have been comfortable playing in the, in that system, having to, you know, face your own goal, getting a ball straight at you, having to pass it either that way? Or back to the goalkeeper. Well I, well, I never think it's a good idea to come straight at your goalkeeper anyway. At least have a bit of an angle. Yeah. Yeah. If you're straight, you don't know either but side. You do that yeah. a lot today. Yeah, it's a lot. And maybe, and that's they're the ones you yeah. may be getting cut out yeah. on the straight passes and the type of pass the keeper gives you. The wrong pace or the wrong side for a player. They're all the little details. Mm. And that comes back to the technique of the goalkeeper. And also just smelling it going, mm. I think they're ready to press here. And, and don't be afraid to be more effective yeah. Yeah. and go along. Yeah. I, that, that all comes back to decision making because yeah. If, when the keeper makes that mistake and he gives the bad pass, I still look at the goalkeeper and go, mm. that, was your, mm. that was your mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you all want to play off from the back, but just smell it in the game. Sometimes you go, it's just, they just feel like they're on top of us at this moment of time. You just, we'll do it when the game settles down a little yeah. bit or they're not as... But I, when I look pressure. back at some, um, yeah. some, some of what we did, so, so late 90s, we actually play a lot like the way the game has been played today. But more, I think, in a more effective way, because we didn't, we didn't have the principle of having to pass the ball out from the back, if that makes sense. Uh, but our variation in how we played is so effective. It is, and of course, it, it comes down to what kind of players you've got. But we played it out from the back. We played that sort of half ball as well. Sometimes I would launch it. Sometimes you would come back and you would launch. 
just to have this unpredictability. Yeah, we used to mix it up quite well, I think. Yeah, yeah. but again, yeah. I think that's just been smart. Yeah. Yeah. Read exactly. the game situation. I, I feel yeah. like we had a very clear direction that yeah. we had to get it into the front players yeah. as quickly as possible in the right way, in you know, in the, in, the, in the most accurate exactly. way. So yeah. For in me, right that was way. always... Yeah. A, so if you could yeah. throw it into the front yeah. players' feet and you, had to, you yeah. could miss us out, you would. Yeah. But that, 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 I still think that's there today, and I think sometimes we forget that. Haaland scored a goal a couple of weeks ago where Brentford have gone man-to-man -man all over the pitch and Edison's just gone yeah. whack. Yeah. That is still the best ball, yeah. the, the, of getting it into your front players. That I think can still be I, I hate watching little. teams. I'm, I'm not against playing from the back. That's the way the game is, and a great technical. But the whole point of doing it is to do is to maybe entice someone onto, as you yeah. said, maybe Celtic to, to get in there. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes feel that teams, when they have the opportunity to do that don't and still make the extra pass yeah. but that can still be a pattern because I remember watching City under 18 years ago and the nine came all the way down the middle of the pitch as if they were going to play that ball took the centre off with them keeper went oh. long the winger just ran in and scored so it can still yeah. people think when you go long it's because you've panicked yeah. but it can still be like yeah. set up in a pattern I think the frustration Jamie for all of us we're talking about teams for City when we've done it when you're good enough to do it, it's fine. It's when you're seeing teams yeah. going week in, week out, and they're giving goals away. You look at the games the weekend, the amount of goals that were given yeah, away yeah. by people trying to do something, you're going, it's not on, it's not on. You're not good enough to do them little short passes. Mm -hmm. Read the game, the situation is five minutes to go, or two minutes before half time, you're one alone, you're one it up. They just seem to be doing it, the lesser teams, at the wrong times. He says, it, it, I, I feel that there is, there is like a school of thought now that there is only one way of playing football. Yeah. They, there's a there's a right way, and then there's, you know, all the yeah. bad teams. And and I I like the idea of, of different, uh, different plays in the same team, Dif a variation of how you start the game and what you do, uh, and in different periods of the game as well. You know, we, we I mean they they are so into all the data these days. You know, and and you see when a lot of goals are being scored is between 28 and 30 second. Um, a minute in, in in every half, and that's because of concentration level falls. If you're yeah. aware of that, then start bombarding, you know, difficult balls and you know, challenge the team. But it's like there is this way, and yeah, everyone has. Got, is that my phone? <laughs> Who is it? Someone's ringing. It's my wife. It's Casper. Answer it, Peter. <laughs> Just, Peter, take, take us back to that first conversation that you had with somebody at Manchester United or somebody that came to you, maybe your agent or whoever it was that represented w When was that first contact made? I had, um, again, we're, we're back in the 80s in Denmark. It's, we, we don't have agents. We don't have, you know, a team as a player. We don't have anyone. We have ourselves, maybe our parents, and that's it. And then I got approached by an agent who said he liked what, I, what he saw and he would really like to work with me. And, then, and he asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, I want to get to Man United. And uh, 18 months later, he, I, that was the first opportunity for me to get to Man United. So who, who, who did you first speak to from the club? Um, Steve Bruce. We were pre-season training. In, in the week, yeah, with Bromby in the week where United were playing Hereford in the cup. And I don't know if you remember how much Fergie was, was under pressure. He had to win this game. He had to, so he took them away and ended up in, in our hotel where we were pre season training. In Denmark? No, in, this is in Spain. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. Man United go to a hotel in Bromby to prepare for an FA Cup game against Hereford. Where have they gone? In January, the snow up to the Where have they gone? So where are you? Somewhere in Marbella. On Marbella, so okay. Obviously, being a big Man United fan, I walk past Steve Bruce and I go, hello. So he's the first one I ever spoke to. But the first time, the first person I speak to is. Uh, is uh, Martin Ebbers. So I, I, I get over, we, we uh, no, actually that's, I'm mixing it up. That's, that's the first, when I'm actually going. They approached me. Bromby asked for far too much money. And so it couldn't happen. What, what was the too much money? 1.2 million. 1.2 million <laughs> was too much. Um, so it fell through. And you know, obviously I was devastated, devastated. And then I get a phone call of uh, someone who's helping that agent to come to his house after training. And in his house is Alex Ferguson. Wow. And he goes, 
Hello. <laughs> I have, uh, I'm disappointed. I know you are. I'm disappointed. But I've seen what I want. And uh, I'm coming back for you in the summer. So play well. You know what? He's like, do this, blah, blah. And he again shook my hand and left, went back to Manchester. So he was the first person I saw. And then in the summer, after? Then in the summer. Then, then I went before, before the end, of, before they won the Cup Winners' Cup. No, no, get me wrong. Was that I? Yeah, before yeah. they won, I think the week before I went over to see Martinez. We did the deal then, and then I knew I was coming over. Um, and it was literally a handshake because they were gone to they've gone on the stock market, so they were not allowed to sign any contract. <laughs> so I had to trust this guy that uh, that that always and having had the experience a year before when it didn't happen, it was a bit of a nervy time. And when I came over and I I started preseason, we even went to Norway for preseason training. I still didn't have a contract, and we came back from Norway, and that same day we were going to Scotland to play Aberdeen. And that was the only day in the international window and after they were allowed to sign contracts that I could sign my contract. So I went from the airport to the office, signed my contract and then back, flew up to Scotland. So to play, we were in UEFA Cup, I think. What year was that? 91. 91. And the fee was... Seven. 500. My first wage, <laughs> I think, was... Um, David De Gea's last wage was a hundred times more than my first wage. I think it, my first wage was three and a half thousand a week. And that wasn't even my last wage. <laughs> <laughs> was it? I think it was. Yeah. Three and a half thousand, thousand a week. That's 1991. good. 1991. <laughs> well, you were fighting for what? Three fifty. That was a few not... years. Oh, when I was a, I was a few years. Don't drag me into it. Don't be, don't be giving it up. Times more, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Oh no. <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I tell you, I didn't care, honestly. Yeah. He could have put nil, I would have signed. Oh, oh, oh this would go down well. It was for me oh, to get the violin, oh, yeah. was get the guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus. It was my dream. You know what he did when, when, I, when I came to, to do the deal? I'm thinking, okay, we're going to sit down and do the deal, and you know, I'm going to see my agent work and all that. No, he took me to the museum. I spent two hours with him in, in the museum. Boss. That's good. Which no, music? Uh, Martin Edwards. Yeah, learn the history of the club. Exactly, yeah. exactly. They should do that to every yeah, player. Yeah, exactly. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I, right. I mean, I was just, I mean... A lot of I, players don't know the history of the club, do they? Even now. It's a good idea, that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he, he did. I, I don't, did he do that with you as well? No, not with no? me. No. <laughs> no, I didn't, no, I didn't. But I, did I think it's a really good the idea. Then? <laughs> no, no, I obviously I was aware of it, obviously growing up in Ireland. But I think a lot of players yeah. don't know the history yeah. of the football club. You Definitely. should take new players on tours of the, of the museum. Idea. No, no, honestly, I think it's, it's important. <laughs> I swear. Honestly, yeah, I'd love to walks. see you as a tour guide. So what, what are your first impressions, Peter? You, you, you join United, there's the pressure on the club of not winning the league for, yeah. at that time, would have been 24 years. Yeah. 20, yeah, 24, 25 years. And obviously you were brought in to be yeah. sort of one of the pieces of... Jigsaw. Sorry, who was your goalkeepers at the time there? Was it Tim Layden and uh, Gary Walsh and... Uh, uh, Les. Was Les there? Les, Les, no, Les left. So he leaves that summer and comes back. And he came back, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, for me, I was in paradise. You know, I was. It, it, this was my big dream, and we started off so well. We played well. I'm looking at these players, and I'm playing with. I'm seeing 17-year-old Ryan Giggs. I'm just, I've never seen anything like it in my life. And Andre Kanchelskis was. Yeah. He was in the same hotel as me, so we we, we spent a little bit of time together. And one, when, when I, I've never heard of him. When I saw him play the first time, wow, you know. But we forget about Andre, don't we? A bit. I, yeah. Yeah. Just I, I came in yeah. the very first day I was. I, I came in on, on, on from Copenhagen, and I was so early. That was the first one in the dressing room, and I'm sat there. Had all Norman Davis picked me up in the gaffer's car, and I thought he's going to take me to a hotel so I can take my luggage there. I'm, I'm, I've packed for life. <laughs> I've got all my. <laughs> remember the first, the first small dressing room. I had all my. Suitcase, everything was here. I'm like this, and they started to come in one by one, you know. And there's Mark Hughes, and then eventually the last one to come in was Brian Robson, who was one of my biggest heroes, and he was sitting next to me, you know. And I'm like, I'm like this. Yeah. I'm really in paradise, and in, to be honest, I, I didn't really think too much about the pressures and of of not having one because he was. So Alex was so adamant 
this is a team and we will win. We will absolutely win. We are the best team and we are best prepared for the future. Uh, and at this time, he's all, I mean, he's already thinking about you guys at, at what point you are going to come into the equation. You've already got Ryan in there. So it, it's, it, he, he knows that something big is going to happen for the club. At least that's how he projects it, right? And then we, uh, we were relatively successful winning, winning the League Cup and then we mess it up at the end of the season. And that's probably my worst time in football. That, that period where we play four games in, in what is it? Mon uh, yeah. Saturday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. <sighs> Just deflated and you know, you see the media go, yeah, it's the same old Man United. And I didn't want to be part of the same old, you know, because I kind of, I was told I was, you know, the final piece in the jigs, or they needed a goalkeeper. They had the whole team ready, and um, and honestly, I went back uh, from that season totally devastated. Then and then we got the call up for the Euros, so that helped a little bit <laughs> on my on my mood. But then coming back, and they, I mean, the manager was brilliant. He was so proud of us. He said, "Just have your rest. Come back. We'll we'll do better next year." And then the final piece ended up being Eric. Yeah, I've just, I've just started to remember. You actually roomed with Eric, didn't you? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, it just, it was, because it, it it, very different to Eric, how you, oh, in terms of obviously your yeah. sort of stuff, but did you room with him straight away as soon as yeah. he came in? Must have been tough for Eric, that was. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, <laughs> he was, he, he kept complaining. <laughs> <laughs> it took him a few years to get that, get me out. You know, he was, I mean, I got to know Eric really well, and I, I mean, I, I really like him, and I, I know a lot of what people see, the way people see Eric. I mean, it's, it's not really the way he is, but he's just a, he's a, he's a very intelligent man, but he's also an incredibly shy man, mm. and it's, it, it's incredible to think that he's a shy man when he's doing what he's doing. You know, yeah. he, he's on a singing tour, he's an actor, he's, a, you know, but he is. Was he the final? I mean, obviously everyone knows. I it think was he the was. final piece of Jesus, yeah. But do you think that that is just yeah. the big moment that? That was the one. That was the one thing. That was one thing that got us over the line because when we talked about you know predictable play before, our our game was a little bit too predictable. But what we did have that separated us from everybody else was the pace. We had the pace from 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 under. We had the pace from Ryan or Lee Sharp to put the ball in the back. So we got a lot of crosses in. More crosses. At, most teams, but that was basically it. So he bringing in Eric and we all of a sudden we got a, a very effective play down the middle as well. So so when we go back to that period of, of, of English football, it was very much that get it into the channels, cross the ball, strikers, you know, one go first post, one go to the last post. All of a sudden now we were we were combining through the middle, you know? And uh, and then of course you come in and then the next level was reached. But Eric's personality was huge, Peter. You mentioned earlier about the pressure, not winning stuff. So Eric took all that in his stride. Yeah. And sometimes players need to see somebody going, no, he seems pretty yeah. cool about it. And, and, he, and it I, I, the final piece. I believe he changed the mentality of from day one. I don't know if you remember this, but Eric came into the dressing room and was really, really shy. And he sat there, you know, he didn't know what to do. So he left and went out, got a football, and went down to the wall behind the goal. The cliff. And then he started to sort of, and I remember people are going, well, what's he doing? And we, you know, all the, everyone was sort of hanging around the, the treatment room, the, the cafeteria, looking at him, thinking, well, what's he doing? It's just half an hour before training starts. No one's ever done that before. And then slowly, and that was all of your kids, you know, we, you, slowly you, you were out there with him. And all of a sudden, there's this mentality that you got to work on something that is yours, individual training. And I remember you, you know, running up and down, crossing the ball, throwing stuff. Gary kept missing the wall. You know, you kept missing the wall. It's you, you go, Gary. Oh, just have you got, have you got a picture of that wall? Because oh. that would be really oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so understand how, how big a miss that is. <laughs> sorry, just that an image of you sorry. taking a throwing and then running after it yourself. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, you're walking back, taking a throwing, running after and crossing. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, Peter, what um, what would you say made you the best goalkeeper? Was it extra hours training, the mentality? Like, what was it? No, I I had a re I said a really good education in yeah. terms of how you know to deal with literally everything. But I think at the end of the day, it's the team you play in that makes you as a. I mean, 
I get asked this all the time, who's the best goalkeeper in the world? And I cannot answer that because it really depends on, on, uh, on what the team, what kind of players you play with, what the team wants, what the coach wants. And I always used to the example of, this is when De Gea was here, if you take the two Manchester clubs and swap the goalkeepers, it's not going to work for either of the team, you know, because Edison will not be able to make those saves. He's not that kind of goalkeeper. And De Gea can't play that game. You know, that's not his strength. So I think I, I, came into, I came into a team that was so good. The individually players were so good. As a team, we were fantastic. But also every single player in that dressing room wanted to win. So I, I, I came into an environment that fitted me, you know, yes, that was, you know, all kinds of things happening, arguments and, you know, not fights and training, but a lot of hard work or hard stuff in training, all of that. But that came from the mentality of wanting to win. And, uh, you know, for the period that I was there, I mean, I, I would say that we were very, very successful. And that built on to the next, next phase of Manchester United as well. And, and if you are in that kind of environment with, with so many great players. But also the challenge for a goalkeeper, we've always said about you need certain characters, Canton, all these people, of course, brilliant players. And the same for you, Peter, obviously. Um, for goalkeepers who make mistakes at United, it's tough, isn't it? Particularly for a goalkeeper. Yeah, I never did that, so I don't know. <laughs> I made one or two, but of course... <laughs> <laughs> listen, every player does. Jesus, listen to me. But it's the reaction, isn't it? It's what yeah, you do it afterwards. Exactly, that's what it is. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of good goalkeepers yeah. go to Man United, they make a few yeah. mistakes and, and they're almost done. Yeah. They just... But that, that is, that is for, I, I think that applies to everyone. But you, more so for a goalkeeper. You, you in, in the uh, semi-final against oh, Juventus. No, but for a goalkeeper, you know? yeah, yeah, but no, but it goal. is that reaction. How do you react to adversity? You know what? But um, I, I, when I did my coaching best, I went to to Man City's academy, and, and Simon it was Simon Davis. Yeah? Simon Davis. Yeah. He he was doing a talk for us, and it was interesting. He said the most difficult part for us here is to teach them how to lose, and it's, it's so weird for him to say that, but it's it makes sense. Adversity is, this, this is where you, that separates, how you deal with that separates a good player from the great player. Mm, I agree. And I, when, I, when I say I made, never made a mistake, I mean that. I know I made mistakes, but I never, I never accepted that, that I would spend the next second thinking about that because there's nothing I can do about that. I have to now look that way. And because if I start thinking, I feel sorry for myself thinking about, I will make the next mistake and then we will not win the game. But Peter, you actually, to be fair, are absolutely right because there were a group of players at that time who never thought it was their fault. Uh, maniacs almost at times. As a hmm. young player coming in. <laughs> no, I'm serious. When I mean, you came into that team, you had a group of people who never thought it was their fault and always thought that someone else could have done better. Or so, it, it, you, you, you were, you were all the same. And you talk about arguments. The most ferocious argument when I think about it that I've ever seen was you at Anfield away. Oh, yeah. And honestly, so we, we travelled obviously at times with the first team. Yeah. And I was breaking in. I think it was, was it 94 or 95? This, this... I don't know. I think it was 94 or 95. I've erased I, I played it from a few my games, memory. But he wasn't playing me at Anfield. I was, I was just yeah. too young to be given that shot at Anfield. And we so. wanted a win, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so he plays, he plays Lee Sharp, I think, at left back. And he plays Dennis at right back to mean that I don't play because I've been playing a, a few weeks. But he said, look, just watch today, son. So I'm watching this game and we lose two. It's a Sunday afternoon. We lose two. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We were 3 0 up in no time and it's 3 3. No, no, it wasn't that game because I was in the stand. All right. That game was fun. No. So I have another argument. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. No, it's argue with a lot of people. <laughs> so it's yeah. one, Is this the one where uh, uh, Redknapp might Redknapp score. Scored, Redknapp oh, that's scored. scored. Yeah. That's so, a 3 3. Yeah. That's definite. No, no Redknapp. No, Redknapp, no, Redknapp scored, hit yeah. a left foot shot. Sure yeah, he did. he did. You should have saved it, I think. Are you sure I played in that game? <laughs> So I come in at half time and you have the most fer I mean, I don't know if you were playing in that game, Roy. With the manager, maybe. Yeah, with yeah. the manager. I mean, it was brutal. Yeah. It was probably the worst I've ever seen. And I actually thought you were actually gonna I thought you were gonna fight. I actually thought you were gonna fight. Yeah. What was it actually over? I don't know. I don't know. Did you, did see you, this he, is he blamed you for a goal, I think. Yes, I mean, uh, probably. But what I what I learned very, very quickly was that he he needed an out. He needed an out, so it, we got, it could, I mean, very often it was, it was in games where things were going well. You know, he needed something off his chest. And he had certain players that he would do that to. I was one of them, Pally was one of them, you were one of them, and Ryan was one of them, which is kind of yeah. weird, right? Um, 
So he's coming in. I, I, I don't remember this specifically, but he's coming. I, and the thing I liked about him was, yes, it would have been, as you say, brutal and, and, and to watch it would have been whatever. But you were allowed as a player. You were allowed to talk back. And he wanted it. He wanted that conversation. Do you think he did? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Because it was shaking things up. He wanted that. And what I learned with him was that 95% of everything he says and said, even in those situations, were by design. He'd been thinking about it. I'm waiting for the opportunity to say that, for instance. Or to I say agree with that. that. So he would pick those moments. And the good thing about that is once it happened, gone. Well, you came in the next day and you apologised, Peter. Do you remember? That was but that same. was a 3-3 three, three game. I know, I'm sure that's the no, same no, no, one. no, no, for sure that's a 3-3 three, three game. Was it? Absolutely, yeah. The 3-3 three, three game, I'm actually because, to stand behind the goal. Obviously, because I, I, I felt, because he picked on me after the game, and I was honestly, I, I don't even remember, the second half was so bad, but I made a lot of saves. I, I kind of felt that I, and I kept the team in it, but they, what he blamed me for was my goal kicks. They ended up with Razor Roddick every time. And I'm like, I mean, he's 80 yards away. What the hell can I do, you know? So I just felt really, really hard done by, okay. by him picking on me. And I mean, my head went, of course. And, and that was, I mean, say? that's probably what, my biggest think, regret in football. What do you say? Did you tell him to have, I'm not. Uh, I'm not repeating that. I'm it's not, a safe space, Hager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I'm not, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does, I put it in my book so you can read my book. <laughs> <laughs> Could you apologise because you think that the could be in your day. last game? I got caught. So, so the next day, so this is a Saturday game. Monday morning, he calls me into the office and he says, I'm going to sack you. Can't, can't have a player doing that. I said, that's fine. I accept that. I apologise to him. And then he calls a meeting in the dressing room and he goes berserk. Remember, that's probably the worst I've ever seen him. He was so angry. And never done that in training before, but he was. And then he leaves and I, 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 so I, I apologise to the team. My behavior was so out of order. And, and you know, you, certain things you can do and certain things you can't do, you know? In the 90 minutes, I, I feel that you can say whatever, you know? Because it's, you know, it's all about winning. Before the game and after the game, you can't say anything. That, that's it. You, it. It's up to the manager or the coaches to talk about what's happened. But you can't go in and say, you played bad or you... Mm. And I did that, I say. I, and I shouldn't have done that. And, and uh, and what well, you said to other players have played back. I, I brought that into the, to the you know. Uh. Was he going to sack you off oh, that, yeah. off that oh, one yeah. moment? But then, then, then the story goes on that he then stopped outside the dressing room and listened in and he didn't think that I was do that and said, OK. He never, honestly never brought it up again. Really? <laughs> never. But, um, but surely arguments happen in dressing rooms. I know what you're saying in the 90 minutes, it's yeah. very emotional, but you can still be emotional after a game, can't you, for a certain period? Oh, yeah, but it, I don't... It, yeah it, was, it was, to be fair, there, there could be a spark that could ignite that dressing room. It was, to be fair, when I was travelling with the team around that time. I mean, obviously, when I broke into the team, he would have a go at players sometimes, but it was definitely more ferocious in those early 90s than it was, say, late 90s, when I think international, more international players came yeah. in, younger players came in, and certainly in the 2000s, it was different again. It, it, yeah, know, but it wasn't it brilliant? Oh, it not, was brilliant, wasn't it, Peter? Like, yeah. That uh, edge. That edge uh, to, there was an edge. There was an edge I, to I, everybody, I, but big personalities. Yeah. Obviously, we're all trying to win. There was an edge at the training ground. There was an edge to training, yeah. the boxes, possession, the running. There was always that edge which I think drove the club. We talk about the word culture, or whatever. That players wanting to win, the manager, the training, led to arguments, disagreements, <laughs> fights. No, it did, but it was all part of the package. It's what made there was energy. Whatever say you go to, if you went to Man United training ground, we were training. There was in, people would come and go. And we'd be getting, and I, I keep repeating myself about this, we'd be getting stuck right into yeah. each other. Peter would be having to go at you, but you're crossing or defending. Yeah. It was constant, but it wasn't just, it was all of us. There was always an edge. It could be me and Incy, me and somebody else. The two of you, Pally, I felt it with Pally Giggs. It was always, on any given day, something could go yeah. off. Just, just talk to us about that, because you ended up, to be fair, I think, um, wrestling on the floor in an hotel corridor in Singapore with each other, didn't you? It was, was a wrestling. Well, you were. It was more of a dance. Wrestling. More of a, yeah. <laughs> More of a dance, a bit like strict. Just, just talk me through this. You basically sort of like it's it's couple. It's two o'clock in the morning. You yeah. basically we've been in for a night. Why is it out. always two in the morning? It's always two in the morning. It's never out, is it? Two in the morning. Everyone was asleep. It's very late at night, and you've ended up basically in the corridor, basically with each other, sort of well, basically brawling. But I think it'd been brewing. So what? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, that's the, the point. Day, so what? Oh no, no, I get that. No, no, so what? I mean. 
you, you can take any footballer and anyone who's been in that's been situations like that. I honestly I I don't see that as important. I I it, it, it not annoys me, but it sometimes irritates me that things like that are being brought up in in because it's so irrelevant. It it goes back to the same thing, you know? It goes back to it, we were those kind of people back then. We would do anything to win. And it 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 kept you in a certain mentality, if that makes sense. And then you stop playing, and then all of a sudden that becomes sort of, okay, you were like that. Okay, I, no way I can be like this now. It's too, it's too, it's too much energy. You can recreate it if you want. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Peter, we, we, no, but we, what we can do, and this is a good idea, we can instruct, and then you are, you're doing it. Yeah. So what we will. Oh, what happened? Yeah, you reconstruct. No, no, but you have to do it right. <laughs> I want to know who won. Yeah, yeah, but the key There's is never a winner. Oh, okay. <laughs> never a winner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, well, I'm losing my train of thought. No, I, but the, I think the, when we go back to it, people falling out, fights, pre-season, people on edge. But the key again, I go back to it. Though, even when we fell out, I fell out with people. It never affected the team. Yeah. It never. We didn't come in the next day and go, it was like, no, no, it's happened. There'll obviously still, still, still be an edge with people, but the focus was still, I still want Peter to be in goal. I still wanted us to win on Saturday. There wasn't, we didn't drag it out, did that, we? It, it, didn't it, it, did, it didn't drag yeah. the team down. We were like, again, no, it, was that, it was that energy. But it stems from there. Did you speak to each other after that from a point of view at yeah, all? We, we were actually, um, we went to talk, Tokyo the next day and we had to do a press conference to together. Press conference. <laughs> It was so funny, yeah. man. It was, but it was so a, but we I said, the manager pulled had us from I had a sort of a, a, a little bleed here, and I got, oh, where have you got that from? <laughs> and I said, Roy hit me. <laughs> and I'm, look, I'm looking into the, and, and they go, what? I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, they, they thought I was taken. Yeah. It was just, I mean, it was just funny that we had to do that the next day. Together, Who yeah. split it up? Or did yeah. just... I think... Ken Merritt. It was a Ken. I think Butty was around. Oh, Ken Merritt. Was it Ken Merritt? It was right. Butty was definitely on the scene. Oh, come on. How does Ken Merritt split I, you two? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I just give me a picture of Ken Merritt, a wonderful no, man. Butty was. Ken was a 65-year-old club secretary. That, to be fair, I'm not sure could have. You know, he wasn't Mills Lane. And listen, <laughs> yeah, 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 Butty was here. But when we came back, the manager pulled us again. We're thinking you're getting away with all this stuff. The manager pulled us and had a go at us. Yeah. And said you shouldn't be. He was angry in the first place because he specifically said no dentist chair. So the whole team went to the yeah. dentist chair. Yeah, that's where we were that night, yeah. Did, did I you go? go? No, you wouldn't have gone. Oh, I was in the single... Oh. No, I did. I did. Well, no, I was out that night. Chair. Oh, no, Gary went to bed early. <laughs> no, I did, I did. I was out that night in single What's floor. a dentist chair? Uh, you know when you sit back in the chair? That's just a normal sit back in the chair. Yeah, I know it was Gaz's celebration, yeah, we but is it actually We were there like the next a, year. A, yeah. Oh, OK. We were there pre-season, yeah. Oh, OK. But, you know, I came... That's the environment I came from at Bromby because... They were the first full-time professional club. They brought all the best players in, and there was that mentality. And we, I won't say every day, but at least twice a week, we would have some kind of fight. Because the players, they absolutely wanted to be the best, and they wanted to win. And I know it was Denmark, but I mean, this team created results because of that mentality that has never been beaten since. And we went the furthest in Europe, uh, and no team has ever gone that far. And it, it's just, I mean, for me, I, as I say, I was brought up in a certain way, mentality or whatever. That's just what it was. In order to, you, you, yeah, you it just had, it needed that, I love that word, the edge, the edge. Needed but when I came back, I was coming back to my cruise ship, Peter, you were reluctant to give back the captaincy. That added another yeah. level to it. You were a little, I was, we were pre-season. I was very. And we were in Scandinavia, the managers uh, rise back from injury, and I thought you would say, well, yeah, you're back, and we were in. Obviously, I think we played in Denmark. The manager. Well, we leave Peter pre-season because he's obviously in the hometown, right. right? And then we played the charity shield, and remember he had to go after the match. Yeah, I, I was a bit uh, upset there. Yeah, but he, hey, it's it's how you see yourself in a in in sort of a given moment of a life, you know, where you are in that position. Yeah, don't worry, I'm not one. I got over it straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Did you get the captaincy back? Of course he got Yeah, it. yeah, but it was just, it was just, this and that was it. It was yeah. just personalities and, um, yeah, yeah, Peter was reluctant to give it up. I had no problem saying that. I'll say it to his face, of course, and I just thought he should have been saying, well, you're back after an injury. Yeah. Obviously, you're the captain, but it was, it was, he was you know, reluctant. You've just admitted yeah. to it. I was not, I was more than reluctant. Mm. 
<laughs> no, I think it's, it's good though. Fight it out, it's done. Yeah. You should have waited till he left Pete and then just got it off him then like <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Stick to Football is brought to you by Skybet. If you're looking at a goalkeeper now in the Premier League that you think, I think he's the best at his job, who is it? Edison. You think Edison's Edison the best? for sure, yeah. I think... Why not I Martinez th or Alisson? I, I think, think Reyes is coming, coming close now. I, he's yeah. really impressed me. I think once, once he got established as Arsenal's number one and, and that sort of competition situation got out of the way, uh, and especially after Ra Ramsdale has sort of left, there's just different, different aura around him. Yeah. I think he uh, he's actually really played play well, he's kept his team in a few games, yeah. made some really important saves, but also he's eradicated a lot of those mistakes he made from having to be a good footballer. You know, remember the last was a City, no, it was Tottenham, where he passed it straight out to Romaro. Yeah. All, all of that, I haven't seen that this season. Yeah. It's kind of like, so I think Alisson is, I mean, in terms of one-in-ones and making really big saves, I think he's fantastic. I thought you'd go Alisson because of the fact that I see more of Alisson in you than I see Edison in you. I think Alisson struggles a little bit with his feet. I think there's a few mistakes that he that you don't see from Edison. That that's the only thing. Mm. Um, Martinez, I think he has. I mean, he's proven Arsenal wrong for sure. Um, he's a big personality, isn't he? I he's, think he's a big personality, yeah. and I think he's helping that team a lot. Um, will he be able to do the job at Man City? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. But he's a winner. Obviously, a World Cup winner has just won the Copa. So, and he's getting there as well. You still look at goalkeepers and go, I just, want, I just like goalkeepers who stop the ball on the back yeah. of the net. He does that. Yeah. yeah does. I thought Raya was good on Sunday in catching yeah. it, though, Roy. I thought he was good in... I know. I want, my goalkeepers. I, know, I want my goalkeepers to come out and do can that. I, can I find it strange? <clears throat> we were in the studio and he came and cut a couple of crosses. Yeah, I heard him. Did you hear about... <laughs> Gary. No, no, not oh, no. And the people in our studio one. had obviously doing the comment. And he was like, oh, brilliant. I'm like... He's come and cut the ball. He's got you gloves on. You did that. Gary did that oh, a did couple you? of times but on the commentary. We'll get to the stage where we're going to be praising players for tying their laces. <laughs> He's come and cut it. Listen, what did he Jesus Christ, just... you're tough, Did man. you see all the answers <laughs> players? Yeah. Oh, jump on top of him. He's cut the ball. That's what he's... That's his job. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. We finally got the line out of That's his job. But the thing is, that that mentality comes from not a lot of goalkeepers are doing that. No, and not doing it's a big that. Thing for but me, what Roy. he does there, which I think is brilliant, and this is why I think it, it, he was brilliant on Saturday. He's coming out in in a period of the game where it, it's fantastic if he does, but there are so many people in front of him. Yeah. So when you come out, you're looking at the ball. Obviously, I might run into him, and then the goal's empty. And you yeah. think about that. You know, but he came. I thought he he really. I mean, obviously the the time wasting. I don't like that bit of it. But I thought he really, really kept his team in it. He took the sting out of of. of but would Roma. you be happy? If you, would people see you've had a great game? You've conceded two goals. No, thank you. Of course not. No, but Roy, no, the reason no, I like, like it. it's just it, it's such a, a moment in a game where you but, think you need to keep a clean sheet yeah. or we need to stop a goal going in. We didn't keep just, a clean sheet. I know, but you know it's a big pressure moment to come out he and catch did. it for he me. Nearly, yeah. he he nearly, sheet, but he nearly kept Peter, it. Peter, just to, last <laughs> question. I want to talk about Casper, and obviously we we will remember you bringing Casper in to the training ground as a I don't know four, five, six year old, and you think of the career that he's yeah. had. Is it harder? He's having. He's what, sorry? He's having. Having, yeah. No, yeah, you're right. He says he's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you think about it, but... It, it's been tough. Is it, has it been harder watching Casper than it was, say, for instance? Were you, are you more nervous watching Casper than, than you were, obviously, playing yourself? Yeah, I was never nervous playing myself. And it's, it's a, you, know, the, you can do something about it all the time. You can... Yeah. I think in the beginning it was really, really difficult to sit there. He was when he was establishing himself. When, well, he wasn't establishing himself when he first started out. His first game, he was 19, it was of Man City against West Ham away, and uh, you know he, the, come, the team is out. You know, see all these guys, be beers, man, muscle, and then this little boy comes out. You know, yeah, re, chins are red. You know, he's you can see he, he's he's not he's not got any money yet at this point. You know, so he hasn't got that weekly haircut and all that. <laughs> And you look at this and say, my God, it's just a boy. What is he doing there? And that was difficult. Um, he, he did really well. So quite, quite quickly, I got sort of more relaxed about it. But it, um, it, the weird thing is, it's for me, football has never stopped. So when we're in it, 
you are in some kind of, I don't, not bubble, but mm, okay. there's a certain element of pressure, even in yeah. your everyday life. Yeah. Of course, when you stop playing yourself, that sort stops. of stops, but it's only diminished for me. I have it every, when he's playing. But yours carries on because of obviously. When he's but... playing, I have that same feeling, you know. Um, if I can't watch the game, if I'm working, for instance, you know, it's that is, my focus is there. It's not on, on, on doing my job. job yeah. And uh, of course, he's back in the Champions League now. So Celtic is a good move, huh? Oh. Is he enjoying it, Celtic? Oh, yeah? my God. It's a nice fit for him, wasn't it? It's, a, it's perfect. It's perfect with the manager he knows, the, the atmosphere around. I mean, yeah. Celtic, Celtic is just a massive, massive yeah, club. I mean, you know that better than me. But And then the team they have, it's amazing. Yeah. I feel so privileged that I have those... Uh, that I can have those moments. Oh. Mm. When when um, when we played you guys in the Euros, yeah. I'm I'm there for, for for Fox and I'm I'm interviewing my own son, oh, which is <laughs> on many many levels completely weird and wrong and all that, but it's also something I will treasure that forever. Yeah. You know, it was really a big moment for me. You, you obviously won titles for United, but you you must believe is his title greater than any of yours? That, that for me is the best moment in football. When I was your best there, moment in football. When I was stood on that uh, in the centre circle and they they were presented that trophy. That was for me. That was you know that was the biggest ever because you know we've we've done it. Um, and I say we've done it so much. So not that it becomes normal. I'm not taking anything away from it. But you was you were there and you did it and you're working towards it. You had the feelings and, and you, you know and it, it was. In many ways, it was a requirement to be a Man United player that you actually won that trophy. But not, not with Leicester. Leicester amazing. Not them. Amazing not story, them. isn't it? Mm. And the funny thing, I, just, just, you know, you, I know you're going to get Casper in at some point here. We were taking down 10 minutes before the end of the game. They're playing Everton. They're 3-0 up. They're flying, you know. He's, a, he's one clean sheet away from winning the Golden Glove, right? Mm -hmm. We are then stood... In the, on the knees of stand, not knowing what was happening until the game finishes and they open the, and we can walk out. And I go up to Casper, you know, and he's angry. He, I mean, he's just about to get the Premier League trophy. You know, he's furious. It turns out he conceded the goal in the last minute, and that was more important to him at that moment. You know, that mentality of having wanting to win, win, win. They've already won the Premier League. I mean, who? But he probably had a bonus in his contract that he put gold <laughs> I know he did. You, I'm know sure he you would have made sure that was in I, there. I'm sure he did. Yeah, he I'm lost sure he did. hundred grand there. But it's just that pride, you know, that the, the, the whole wanting to win and wanting to do everything to to win. So even at that moment, that meant okay, it was a brief moment, but it was that, that's just his. They're a good lesson for Leicester. We talk about yeah. every team playing tippy tappy football now. Hey, Leicester didn't mess about, did they? No, they a couple did. of big strong centre halves, a striker, Casper putting it in behind, not messing got, about. But don't forget they got they had Maris, they had oh, Kante, listen. Kante, they had Kante. Mardi who couldn't yeah, miss. Drink water midfield, yeah. Vardy, very good. Drink water, uh, they had uh, Old Brighton. They, I mean, they had Simpson. really good players. Did Danny Simpson? Yeah, Danny. Simo, yeah. Danny, yeah. yeah. But what they also had, they had the luck of no injuries. Lovely. They literally played yeah. the same eleven mm -hmm. every time. So and yeah. that that by the way, that was a big moment. Yeah. So that was a bigger moment than when you lifted the. European trophy. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's your kid, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's your kid, and in 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 a, in a I mean, I know it sounds a bit, but we were expected to do it, so it wasn't that big a surprise. Mm. And we've already, in my time, we already messed up one year, so the next year it was more, even more. You have to do it. So once it was done, it was what you had to do. Yeah. So you were, of course, your man. After so many years, it was brilliant, and I think the whole area, Manchester, changed. Football changed in Manchester once, once we did. That I won the first Premier League, and you felt that it was brilliant to be part of. But it's you just can't explain what it's like when your son is stood there and done the same mm. thing. Do you ever feel like regret? Do you feel like you got to enjoy your successes? Do you oh, know what I mean, or did you no, just go on to the next one? That yeah. like, do you ever regret that? Mm. Not really. It was just the way it was, wasn't it? Yeah. The mindset. You move on. I think if you relax and enjoy it too much, I always felt you'd be left behind. Mm. Just right. the next game is always the most important one, isn't it? Next trophy, next challenge. Yeah, so no, I don't know about you. I'm no regrets. That, that was a good thing, I, I, exactly that. The challenge of having to play the next game and the, winning the next one. They, so, of course, it meant a lot. But, again, you were expected to do it. So, 
to live up to that was was that was a reward if that makes yeah. sense. Um, and then see how many you could win in a year. Peter, it's been amazing having you on, yes. but I'm being told that you've got to catch a flight. I, yeah. And I don't oh. think it's a what private jet it? that we can adjust for you. <laughs> nah. <I> think <laughs> Peter, thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, thank you. Well, good. Good. well done. It's nice to meet a Man United legend. <laughs> <laughs> No, Katara, lads, you didn't get to tell you what to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, go, go, go. You can sing it on the way out. Hey, I'd like to leave this city. city. This old town don't smell too pretty. And I can feel the warning signs running around my mind. <laughs> so what do you say? Come on, Jill. Give me the please that I'm mine anyway. Half the world away. Have the world away. I've heard enough. Brilliant, Peter. <laughs> <laughs>